and welcome to Sasquatch Speaks. Today is a Tuesday, and it's the last Tuesday of September, but the date I don't know. But this is episode 204. I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S-Q-R-R-L on Instagram. Thank you to all the Patreon and PayPal supporters of the podcast. I five, five, five. Are you giving them a high five? Take a moment. Give them a high five, yo. They're making this whole thing happen. I will draw prizes next time for those of you who donated during the third quarter. Dude. The fourth quarter flies by, y'all. Are you ready? It's like almost October. And while I'm so excited that it's almost October, I'm also like, now it can't be October yet because I want to savor wanting it to be October just a little bit more. <laughs> By the way, it's 90 degrees here, yo. Not cool, both literally and figuratively. Really though, I'm over it. Um, this week's episode will contain lots of knitting. I might have some finished objects because I actually just showed you, but I'll hold off for a minute. It won't contain any spinning. My, my spinning has been all mental. I've got this hankering to like fleece spin. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I need to color some card or comb. I'm not deciding yet. Some wool from a fleecy animal that's a fleecy natural color. Is this really just me, like, trying to justify buying a re fleece at Rhinebeck? Pretty sure it is, subconscious you. I got your number, yo. Let's see what you're doing up there. Settle down. But it's so fun to buy fleece at Rhinebeck. Ah, it's all so crimpy. It's so crimpy. It's like wooly crinkle fries, y'all. Sorry, I'm going to just take a moment and write a note to myself about an idea I'm having at this very second. <laughs> that I need to make sure I make happen in the very near future. <laughs> but anyway, it's just uh, so exciting to do it. Even though it's ridiculous because I may have five pounds of fleece in my house that has not been processed yet. I have no drum carter. I have no wool picker. I do have hand cards though. <laughs> I do have um, a comber. See, I have hand combs. <laughs> it is like both me wanting to be the person who cards the wool, because that's who I want to be, right? I totally want to be the person who cards the wool, and I want to purchase the thing that makes that happen. And like, I love all the aesthetics around this experience. But I'm not, I have not regularly been, maybe future me will be changed. I'm allowing myself to be different in the future. But I have not regularly blocked out time to do those activities. <laughs> I just like the thought of me doing those activities. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. <laughs> so I've been all daydreaming about processing fleeces. I'm a hot mess, yo. So the spinning has not been happening. Oh man, cause like other things have been happening, it's been crazy. Cause I'm getting ready for needles up, yo. What? Are you gonna be in New York sheep and Are you gonna be in New York sheep and wool? If you're gonna be there the Friday before and you might be in the area of right back, then you might drop by the needles up event. If you'd like to find out more, there is a website at needlesup.com because the ladies who are organizing it are amazing. I am not one of them. <laughs> I'm riding coattails. Right on. Anyway, so yay yeah, that. So because of that, they're not, did I do this already? I feel like this has gone crazy. Something happened in my brain. Um, I will not be doing uh, shenanigans because there really weren't any. Oh my gosh, suddenly I'm starving. Oh, I don't know what made me think that. I needed food for my adventuring that I'm not adventuring. Whatever. Craziness. 
So I will also opt out of From the Boards just because last week's episode was so long. Can you believe the hubris of me? That I'm like, yes, clearly I'll talk to you for an hour and a half and y'all listen. Who do I think I am? Let's get into it. Not the who do I think I am part. That's like a therapy session that needs to be like eight hours long times forever. <laughs> Let's talk about some knitting. Yeah. Oh wait, this is knitting, but it's like a general announcement that I should make first because otherwise I'll forget. Okay, I've got an idea for an along, y'all. I don't do a lot of alongs, but I kind of this is one I definitely want to do. And the other one I really want to do, but I'm not sure about the timing. So let's talk about the one that's definite first. Okay, it's almost Halloween, right? I almost said in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> it's almost Halloween, right? <laughs> I thought we should totally do, I'm not deciding that the name of it is, maybe you'll help, but like, um, a resurrection along, resurrection along, um, a knit of the living dead along. It's where, as of October 31st, running through the end of November, whatever date that is, I'm only making it a month because I'm locking you in, but you got a while to plan for it, right? Okay. You know, go through your sweaters. I would say sweaters, but also I guess other things. I'm mostly thinking of sweaters, but I guess it really could be anything. And find something that's dead. Find something that you are not wearing, that you were not excited about. And it could be because it doesn't fit, or it could be because you just don't like the style, or it could be because you're like this yarn, maybe not so much. Although the yarn thing might be hard to fix. And we're gonna fix them. We're gonna make them into happy, happy, non-dead things. Okay, so this is the first one I'm gonna do, talk about. I have this sweater, and now I don't know what it's called. That's a mistake that I just made. Maybe I'll remember to put it in the show notes, or maybe I'll put it on the screen. I don't know. It is a Brooklyn Tweed pattern, I remember that much. It's like Carapino. Oh my gosh, if that were actually the name of it, would you give me a thousand million dollars? Because you should. Um, it's 10 a.m. by the way, just so you know. <laughs> it's not like a meal time. We're creeping up on 11z's though, apparently. Is it Carapino? No, apparently that's not even a pattern name. <laughs> but it is Carpino! Shut up. Okay, this is the Carpino sweater by Carol Feller. And it's knit with Bartlett wool in a sport weight yarn, and I'm not sure the name of the color, but... I love the color. I love the yarn. This originally is supposed to be a long sleeve sweater, by the way, but I love short sleeve sweaters. And it fits. It's not like it doesn't fit, but I just don't like it. You can see, I did this forever ago. That means I've never worn it, probably. I hope that means I've never worn it. <laughs> I don't know if it's just, I think it's the meshiness of the front that while I, I and it's not like it's I am all about tight sweaters I don't care I got big boobs who cares you know it's not that it's just something about I just don't like the texture on my front I don't know what it is because I, I don't even think if it were looser I would be okay with it I still think like because I'm trying to like pull it forward to see see okay like that so I'm like yeah still not I'm just not in love with this texture stitch. Maybe it is because it's snugger, but it's not like it's tight. I mean, please y'all. I do usually do negative ease in the bust just because that way it's less to increase <laughs> and decrease down. But like, I don't know, I'm just not in love, you know? So I was thinking I could make it into a card again. Maybe that's crazy pants, I'm not sure. So it might involve making it longer. I don't know. It might involve just making it a cardigan. I don't know. But I thought if we did a knit of the living dead along, then we could all find a project that we were like, and make it new again. So like zombies, but nice. 
<laughs> what do you think? We should totally do it, right? Okay, so get thinking on what you're gonna do. I'll remember. I'll try to remember to open up a board, but if I don't, you can start one. A thread on the board. That's what I meant to say. And we can talk about like what we're going to good redo, like why you don't like it, and then you can might you might have an idea for what you want to do to fix it, or you might be like, dude, I got nothing. And then maybe we could like give you ideas for how to fix it. And then on Halloween. We're after. <laughs> we could commence a fixin'. What do you think? Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I also secretly really wanna do, an, uh, not secretly, I'm telling you. Oh, it's secret, it's just me and you. I think we should do an Elizabeth Zimmerman along. I think it's the season. It's the season for Wooly Wool. I don't know. So I kinda wanna do an Elizabeth Zimmerman along. Maybe we could do it for like the full last quarter of the year. Is that too stressful for people? Like in terms of getting things done? Does it make you nervous? Because I mean, I'm not actually a huge fan of all Elizabeth Zimmerman sweaters. Not that I don't like some of her sweaters. What do you think? Maybe we could make it for the last quarter. Would that be less stressful? You know somebody in your life needs a weird hat. <laughs> Okay. Let's talk about knitting. Okay. I have so many finished objects. I'm so excited to show you. Ah! Okay, so the first one I'll show you is my Booster Beanie. Booster. And this is a free pattern for Shetland Wool Week, which by the way is totally happening. Are you jelly? So jelly. So this is my Bustabini, and this, did I say it's by Gudrun Johnson? Johnston? Is it Johnston or Johnston? You know who I'm talking about, right? Um, this is knit in Swan's Island Sports. The pattern is written for fingering weight. Um, however, I have a giant head, and I tend to like my hats not really snug because there are no winds whipping across my Shetland Isles. So I like a looser hat. <laughs> so mine is knit with um, Swan's Island Sport. And I dig this yarn hard, yo. I love it. And <laughs> the dark color is ocean, I believe. The light color of blue is ice and the orange color is poppy. I made mine one repeat deeper, longer, taller, whatever, because I like my hat to be a little slouchy. And I think the pattern is written with a pom-pom, which I did not do because again, mine's longer and I feel like it's, I don't always like a pom-pom hanging off the back of my head. On the top of my head, it's fun and it, that's what it is. When the pom-pom is up here, I can enjoy it. When the pom-pom is back here, it is for other people to enjoy, which, let's face it, I don't like all other people. Now, if I was only hanging around you guys, I would totally make you a pom-pom just for you to look at. But, like, that guy? He doesn't get to look at my pom-pom. He does not appreciate my pom-pom. So that's maybe why. Now I've just made that realization. Such an enjoyable thing to knit. Oh! Um, I did not make it any different around, um, but I did when I cast on, I believe, it's a free pattern, yo. I believe when you cast on, you cast on like 120 stitches, and then you increase to 144 after the ribbing, if I am not mistaken. Um, what I did was actually cast on, so let's say it's 120 and 144, I cast on half of that extra. So instead of casting on 120, I cast on half that difference, which is 24. I cast on 132. Because again, I don't like my ribbing really tight. Just how I roll. So I stay cute. I love it. And it's so squishy. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can wear all my foes. No, that's Grace talk. <gasps> I totally left a foe over there. I'll have to get 
I'm sure a dog will bark or something. <laughs> because that's the story of this podcast. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I finished, oh, I accidentally hit. <sighs> Stop my face. I was on my show notes from last week to show you the, make sure I got you the names and stuff. So I accidentally hit play on my own last week's episode. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you is my weights cardigan, which is by Bristol Ivy. And it's knit in Volmice Lace, Campari Orange, and Terra di Siena. So do you remember this one? It was mostly done, but I had it had to have a timeout. Do you recall that? It's been a few weeks. Because, not because it was bad, but just because it was not what I thought it was going to be. You know, you've had that happen, right? Where you've had this like vision of what the thing will be, and then it's not that vision, and you're like, and even though it's okay, it's just it just had to take a minute. It just needed to sit for a minute. Okay, so. Here it is. Ba-ba! And as I discussed, I'm shedding everywhere. That's not what I discussed. Um, but I talked about how I was unsure about the front being significantly shorter than the back. Oh, let's see. Let's see, I can't, I got a shelf, but it's crazy. It's out of control. There you go. <laughs> Maybe I'll actually put like a professional picture in at the end. So sorry, you can see like my vacuum cleaner and craziness but um here's the sweater I wanted to give you a longer view so you could see see it's really not that much I think what happened for one thing that when I originally blocked it the way I had it laying the back part stretched out even more so and that was part of the reason so I did re-block it and laid it flat or kind of scrunch up the back a little bit um, so that might have helped too. So I was not sure. I, I knew I would not. I didn't think I would like rip it out. I thought maybe I might take up the butt a little bit. I'll let that sit with you for a second. Um, so I was not sure because again in my mind it was going to be like a short little cropped sweater that I would wear over my dress number ones in the sweater in the sweater time, in the not sweater time, in the summertime. <laughs> And then it was not that, I was like not sure exactly what to do. So I decided what to do is that I would put a short sleeve on it. It's not exactly like a cap because there is, it actually worked a little bit. I think I worked like 10 rows plus a few rows of ribbing, maybe eight to 10 row of ribbing. Um, so it's not a cap sleeve, it's a short sleeve so that I could kind of wear it with, um, you know, without a shirt under it in this, not without with just a sleeveless shirt under it in the summer if I wanted to. Or what I'll probably wear it more with is like a long sleeve t-shirt, a tunic, and then this craziness. Because I am all sorts of hot messery. So this kit, this kit, this knit was very fun to knit. <laughs> if you don't recall from last time, you actually start with this band and then you do increases to get your arms and then you break them off, and then you do the back is like a counterpane. Can you see that? It's not a counterpane because it's not a true four points coming in, but it's similar in ideasness. Okay. So it's very fun to knit. It is written to be long sleeve, but again, as I said earlier, I'm just not. I have a few long sleeve sweaters. It's not like I am totally anti long sleeve, but I just don't wear them as often. Because A, they're hotter. I don't know if you know that, but when your arms are covered with wool, they are warmer. Pro tip. Um, but also there is less pilling with a short sleeve sweater because again, the boob arm pill is crazy on my super fat lady self. Okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to put them all in at once because it is 90 degrees today. It's not quite 90 degrees yet, but it's a good 80 something. <laughs> okay, so then the next thing I'll show you is my Ninilchuk. Is that right? Ninilchuk? Ninilchik, sorry. Swancho by Caitlin Hunter. And it is knit with 
The main color is Cascade 220. Now this pattern is written for DK, but live a little, go crazy. And really Cascade 20 is like a light worsted, so. Go crazy. Um, and then the rest is from the Woolen Rabbit and her Emma base, which is a polar silk, which is delicious. Um, the lighter taupey color is Birch Beer. The goldy yellow color is Butterscotch. And the reddy orangey color is Tiger Lily. I just realized I haven't finished. I didn't win. I did not weave in the last end, but I'll make sure that happens sometime soon. So feel free to judge me. It's all I got thrown over because it fell off my table over here. <laughs> So I made, there's only two sizes. I made the larger 3X size. Let's see if I can gracefully put this on. Um, the pattern is written with um, one inch of ribbing at the bottom, which is what I did. But then when I put it on, well, A, I realized something. You're gonna probably laugh at me when I tell you this. I've known how to knit for 21 years now, is that right? Yes, that's right, I learned to knit in 1996, self-taught. Um, you know how when you're casting off ribbing, it's always like cast off in pattern? Do I ever do that? Yeah, once in a while. Let's face it, once in 700 times I do that. I don't like to pearl so much if you're new to the podcast. I had a realization this week, knitting epiphany, that there's kind of a reason you do that. It's not, because I've always been like, you can't tell that stitch whether it's purled or knit when you cast it, when you bind it off. I mean, you can if you like look at it like this, but who's doing that, yo? Get a hobby or, or hobby or -er. get more hobbies. <laughs> it's actually, there's a reason and the reason is if you cast it off in the knit stitch all the way around, it has a tendency to flare out. I didn't realize that until this week. I cast off a pair of something. Oh, I cast off the sleeve. And I was like, what is that about? What is, what is that? It flared out. I mean, it was fine when I put it on, but when it's like just hanging out, I was like, oh, that's kind of strange. So then I went back and cast it off in pattern and it totally took care of itself. Sometimes the things just don't really come to you until... <laughs> so anyway, I had cast this off already. I'd done one inch of ribbing and cast it off the incorrect way just by knitting and casting off. And when I put it on, it didn't exactly flip up, but you know, you, it had that feeling like it was going to flip up, like the hem was going to flip up. And I was just like, oh. so I am such a good knitter. I totally get a gold star. I took out the entire bind off and knit like, mm, I think maybe like half an inch more. It's really just like two or three more rows. And then did the bind off in pattern and it does lay much nicer now. So maybe I could have just like ripped out the bind off and bound off again in pattern and it would have been fine. But again, the three rows isn't gonna hurt anything. And so here it is. Again, I don't, I'm like, it's too hot. <laughs> I have lights on and it's a million degrees. Swancho. Swancho. And you can see, because the this brown yarn is a little bit um, thicker, again, it's technically a worsted weight, whereas the rest is decay. So that combined with color work, you can see that it flares just a tiny bit underneath that color work, but I was really, like that was actually fine with me and maybe even a benefit, like a bonus. Uh, because of the bigness of myself. Okay. So I think it's super cute. I'll try to get FO pictures up on Ravelry pages. I'm actually trying to be a grown up about some stuff. Trying, being the operative word. Um, so I'm just trying to move to show you. You can move in it. <laughs> you can dance in it. Yeah, that's right. You can do all those things. You can carry a shopping bag, but not maybe a shoulder purse. That might be more challenging.
So somebody wrote in, I don't know, but Karen was YouTube or something else, uh, but that she was concerned about making the swancho because she was a bustier lady and she was afraid it was not going to be flattering. It's not. I don't think. I don't think it's flattering. That's okay. Get Stacey and Clinton out of your head. Not everything has to be flattering. Not everything has to try to make you look like something you're not. Because you're still not going to look like that thing you're not. Because even the people that are that thing don't think they look like that thing. You know, like, all, the women that you know that are, like, perfectly proportioned in the way that they're perfectly proportioned at this moment in time and fashion and style still don't think they're that thing. They're still trying to wear flattering clothing, right? Not all of them. Okay, I don't mean that. But you know, you know, you know at least one woman like that. So just flattering out the door. Kick it out. Joy. Joy is what you're going for. So while not flattering, it is joyful. And I'll take that. That's what I'm going for. I'm just saying. <laughs> That's my two cents. So little chick. Little chick, Swancho. It would be less difficult to get on and off if it were not, as I mentioned, 80 degrees. Maybe I should take off my hat, but I just like it so much. But I am getting a little bit warm. Whew. Okay. Whew. Getting the vapors. Okay, next thing. Do you see that I'm about to show? Okay, that was a finished hat. That was a finished schwancho. So that's basically more than a sweater. Just, I'm just saying. I think that's more square footage than a sweater. Okay, it's the same. Probably mathematically. It's a loose sweater. But whatever. Another sweater. What? Could there be a third sweater on my table? <gasps> yeah, there totally is. That would be really disappointing if I were like, no, there's not. <laughs> okay, so last time we talked about the zipper in my Monte Rosa cardigan by Isabel Kramer. This is knit in row and worsted. And I tried it on for you and I showed you that there was like that weird extra zipper boob happening. So some, some I'll just briefly mention people's suggestions. Um, one suggestion was that maybe it was not that the zipper was wrong, but that my tension when binding off, because the weird process I did was to pick up stitches for the sweater, pick up stitches for the zipper with that little um, knit picker thing, and then do a, a, three quarter, a three needle bind off between them. So one suggestion was like, well, maybe it was just that the um, bind off was too tight because, you know, we'll know that that will like warple things. And I may have said something wrong. I said my sweater zipper was too short. It was not too long. Um, but that in this case was not what had happened. Um, literally, there was too much zipper per, like, let's say the sweater uh, length was, I'm making a number up, was 30 inches. I had put 32 inches of zipper into it unknowingly. Um, and that's really a common thing even when you're sewing in a zipper. That's why they always recommend that you pin the zipper in because your knitting is so beautifully flexible and the zipper is so rigid and okay. What tends to happen is that when you're sewing them together, the, the knitting is like, oh, you want me to go to here? Oh, okay. Oh, you want me to go here? Okay. And typically, your knitting will stretch out more than you want it to on top of the zipper. Meaning, you put that 30 inches of sweater, you kind of inadvertently stretch it to make it 32 inches, because you know you could do that, no problem, right? Like, this is the height of my sweater. Like, I could easily add like four inches without even, I mean like that's like literally three inches and it's barely, so when you're working like stitch by stitch, you do not notice it. It's just a cumulative action that adds up. And again, suddenly you've accidentally or inadvertently stretched your knitting um, because it is so flexible and you've worked in or eased in extra amount of zipper. So typically when I'm um, pinning in a zipper or stitching in a zipper, I kind of almost am like, 
I mean, I'm not compressing the knitting because that will of course lead to the opposite problem, but I am very conscious of not stretching the knitting. I am constantly kind of like trying to get it. Okay. Is this, I'm constantly scrunching it and then letting it relax a little bit and then pinning. Uh, because again, the tendency otherwise is just to just very mildly stretch it over the length of the zipper. And that's why you get that um, wad of zipper in places. I mean, I could have made the wad happen anywhere. It's just easier to do over my boobs. <clears throat> and I apologize, I do not remember who you are, but you were in the notes, and the notes, in the uh, Ravelry discussion board. Yay, everybody who responded! Um, suggest, or she says that when she puts a zipper in knitwear, she puts it on her dress form. If you have a dress form, that is ideal. Because your sweater is going to naturally um, stretch more over your bust or your hips or your tummy or whatever. And so that will change how the zipper works in. That's one of the reasons it's easy to pull it extra out over your bust, um, you know, to demonstrate. But so pinning it in on a dress form is ideal. But if you can't, that's fine too. You can pin it just on a flat surface. Just make sure you try it on and you're willing to re unpin and repin. Um, like don't get completely locked in. You know, it's like a low key. Some people baste it in. Um, Whatever works for you. I tend to just pin it in. Sorry, that's so much of me talking. Um, the other problem, I guess, would be if you feel like... One thing you can tell... One reason you can tell the zipper is too long for the sweater. When you unzip your sweater, if the bottom bells out like this... And now, obviously, if your sweater is super tight. But, like, if you notice that the, the zipper tip, tips, tabs, whatever, come to a point, like it goes whoop, that means you have too long of a zipper in your sweater because it's like pushing your sweater down. That's also how you can tell if you've picked up stitches for a button band that you've picked up too many stitches, it will stretch your sweater out like that. So if you, conversely, I would imagine if you've not, if you've um, scrunched your knitting up to put a zipper in, you would have the opposite, we would pull up like your, this is the bottom of your sweater and it would kind of pull up at the zipper. I've never done that accidentally. <laughs> it's always the opposite way for me, but that's just me. Okay, so that's lots of talking. But what I did do is take it all apart. Again, another gold badge. It's like being a super knitter this week. Amazing. But I took it all apart and redid it. Um, and the method I used this time is the method I will use to do the tutorial. I'll actually probably talk about a couple of different ways to do it with the knit picker, putting the zipper in. Sorry. Um, but it is the method where I pinned the zipper in and then used the knit picker, just like I was picking up stitches for a button band, except I was catching both the edge of the sweater and the zipper and pulling them up. And I just bound off as I went. So I didn't do any extra knitting. I would just like pick up a stitch. I actually used a crochet hook because it was easier. Put on the crochet hook, picked up another stitch, put on the crochet hook, pulled that, you know, pulled the second one. So I was like binding off as I went have done lots of different things like you could have like kept you could have kept those live stitches and knit a couple rows and like either tried to get um like a rolled salvage edge or you could have like put a little ribbing so that you would have like a covered zipper which I thought would be kind of fun but I was not into it at that point <laughs> so anyway so here we go here's the zipper you can see like lays much more nicely <sighs> um you see there when I unzip it, it lays pretty well. I mean, it might flare just a tiny bit, but nothing like it was doing before. So you can just tell it was uneasy before. I just wanted to like, oh, it's like, oh, I felt like I needed to stretch this part out. And again, part of that is because of the difference in the garter and this of the side panels and the stockinette of this part. It's not straight stockinette, so I mean, there are cables which do shorten the length but you can still tell that like for example like this part you can see the breadth of this just kind of wants to dip down just a tiny bit I think that's less because of the zipper than it is because of the difference in row gauge between this and this oh my gosh is that enough of my words I didn't show you the sides
So in my true self fashion, I did do, um, I think this shaping written in the pattern is traditional side seam straight shaping, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Um, I do try to do my shaping in this region, a la Amy Herzog. And I'm not seeing my decrease rows, but... One thing I learned from another pattern is do not put your decreases for shaping right here. I'll show you, I'm trying to remember to show you that another time. Maybe I'll show you that next week because it's the light knit of the living dead that needs to just die. <laughs> but, and so then I also did um, butt darts or hip increases, whatever, right through here. Um, and that's just that I don't like a lot of extra fabric right through here. I prefer and like really, you can see like this, the difference in circumference of my butt and back. When I have a sweater that doesn't have the butt darts or the hip darts, it like wants to tent out like this. I'll say the bad, the bad word, it's not flattering. <laughs> oh, you guys, I know I'm the worst. I'm like, no flattering, but flattering. You know, you choose. <laughs> really, it's because I like my sticky outy butt enough to be like, yeah, that's right. My butt sticks out. Here it is. It's not really flattering. I'm sure there are a lot of people who are like, cover that up, that's not flattering. <laughs> Hush, people. Okay, so now we're on to works in progress. Oh, I picked the wrong works in progress. I mean, I didn't, but I did. I finished one of the um, Laura Neal bootstrap socks for my papa, but I left that bag over there apparently. I do want to show you. Look at this sock. I'm making a bootstrap sock for myself. I've never made one for me, so I don't know really how they fit. Are you seeing this yarn? Noink. Camera, that's right. There you go. Do you see that? Oh, sorry. I'm getting warmer. <laughs> This is a sock blank by Ninja Chickens. This is when she first started doing her eco print sock blanks. Like she has some now that are crazy. But look at this beautiful thing. So this, she gave this to me last year. And this is printed with apples. See, that's why I had to cast this on. Even though I really shouldn't be knitting a sock for myself because my pitiful little papa wore out a pair of his socks and now he's like, afraid to wear his socks. My grandparents are aging because that's what we all do. Um, but my grandfather is having some dementia, mental health issues, and he's always been not, he's always been very controlling, which is not great, but you know, he's always been very much in control of himself. And um, so it's very rough to see that progression. And anyway, he really likes a couple of these pairs of socks that I made and he has worn out the bottoms of them because he didn't tell me that they, you know, needed some mending until like literally the whole bottom of the sock was gone. <laughs> so I was talking to my mamaw on the phone the other day because I had sent a pair of socks with my mom to give him. And my mamaw was talking to me about how the other day he came into the kitchen and she was like, Arlie, where's your socks? My bubble name is Arlie. Right? How cool a name is that? Arlie wears your socks. And he's like, well, I thought maybe I should just wear them to bed and not wear them for walking around because I don't want to wear them out. So I had to cast, I cast these on before that conversation happened. Uh, and I love this sock yarn so much. It is infinitely gorgeous and beautiful and made by the amazing Ninja Chicken. Did I even say all the things it was made with? But it has to go in time out because I need to make lots of socks for my mom and papa. <laughs> anyway, this blank is dyed with apples, onion skins, eucalyptus, and dahlias, and an indigo dye bath. But she's got some now where she has developed her technique so much that you can, I mean, they're very distinct images of the, the items that she has used to dye them. Like this one, you can definitely see my apples are in there. And they have just gotten, hers, I've just, she's just progressed insanely with her eco-printing technique. It's awesome. 
But so, I did take those to the um, apple orchard, and I also took them to cider pressing day. But I didn't actually get them out. I was like all gonna be like super earth based religiony and like have them at the apple thing and their apple sock blanks and apples and apples up and apples. But then I got distracted. <laughs> Because I want to be the person who cards the wool. Not really always the person who cards the wool. <laughs> okay, last thing to show you. What's this one called? Oh, so that's just, oh, I'm also, so I did, I did tell you that. I was going to do a bootstrap sock with that one too. This is a new project. And it is conveniently in one of these places that I am looking so that I can tell you what it is. It is the Jordan Point Shawl, which is by somebody who did not put their name very clearly on the front page of the pattern. <laughs> um, Laura Ayler. So Laura, A-Y-L-O-R. Okay. And it is actually a pattern for three different shawls. Um, one of them is the one I'll show you. Well, here's like the pattern cover page. This is like a simplified, obviously. This is a simplified representation of what the three are. So you have a stripey, two stripey, they're all, they're all three stripey, but there's different edgings. You can do just a straight mitered edging, or you can do this like fancy sawtooth edging. And they are knit, um, in the sideways, as you can see by the striping, and by the thing I'll show you right now, instead of just using abstract words. You cast on, like, you know, right here, and then you're knitting here. And then in a minute, I'm gonna switch over to just doing this contrast color. So, and then I'll, okay, so the gray, is Cloudborn Highland, which is um, a basic yarn from Craftsy. It is, it is, I think, supposed to be wool and spun, if I'm not mistaken. It definitely feels like it's a wool and spun, um, but it, but kind of like a weird hybrid in that it feels, it's, it has the airiness of a wool and spun, but it's probably like a different fiber. Like maybe they're using a longer fiber than is traditionally used for a woolen spun because it seems smoother than a normal woolen spun. I don't, I don't know, but that's, that's just kind of my interpretation. It is very, I mean, it's, I shouldn't say it's very soft. It's like not Madeline Tosh, but it has a nice, yeah, I could definitely wear a hat with it. Um, if you're super sensitive to any kind of prickle factor, then it's probably not for you. But uh, in terms of like right next to your skin. Uh, this is Cloudborn. This one is a DK. I do recommend that if you're gonna purchase Cloudborn for a project, you get a size bigger than you think you're gonna need. So for example, if you're knitting a fingering weight object, I would get the sport weight yarn. Does that make sense? Um, this I thought, well, I don't know if it's sport or DK because it's hand spun and I'm not really checking wraps for inch because it lies just like age does. But, so I got the DK, but again, if I had thought I needed DK, I would have actually gotten worsted. Uh, it's just, it's a little skinnier than, again, because the whole thing of like where I'm like, it seems like it's smoother than most um, woolen spun yarns. Maybe that's contributing to it feeling like it has a smaller diameter than uh, the slightly hairier, sounds like such a negative word. But you know, the, the yarns that are slightly less smooth seem to have more surface area. Um, but anyway, it's nice, it's very, you can see, you see how far my hands are going apart? It's very springy and it's very lightweight. It's a nice, it's a nice yarn. And they actually have quite a few colors and so anyway. Um, the other yarn is hand spun and it is awesome, right? Not because I spun it, because people who are awesome dyed the fiber. Um, this is a gradient from Fiber Optic, and I apologize, I don't know, I no longer know what it is, but it's like a campfire gradient. It goes from a red into an orange, into a black, into a gray, into a light gray, um, 
and then it is plied with, so that's one ply, and the other ply is Curry Up uh, by Yarn Geek Fibers. Come on. So I really thought when I had spun this that it was going to be a um, Quaker yarn stretcher, but it just kind of hung out. It wasn't sure what the, that's what it was going to be. And then I had a flash of like, ha, ah, a perfect person to knit this for, who is very much a lover of the Halloween and wanted a big giant shawl. I've gotten myself all tangled up, I apologize. But I showed you that already. I showed you. I showed you. It's very fun to knit. Oh, so enjoyable. Just carry the, the uh, contrasting yarn up the side because what you're going to end up doing is picking up all around the circumference anyway to um, the perimeter, I guess, is the thing. It's outside measurement, but it's not a circle. You're going to pick up the perimeter anyway to knit that border so you don't even have to worry about if your edge looks perfect or not. Um, I'm really enjoying it. It is like just again. I love this texture. Wool people. I know preaching to the choir, but come on, it's amazing. So squishy. That's it, y'all. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a great week, and I will talk to you next time. I have prizes for Patreon and PayPal donors. And I'll have another example for what I'm going to do for the Knit of the Living Dead along. You can tell me in the meantime what you think about doing an Elizabeth Zimmerman along. I just love Elizabeth Zimmerman, yeah. And I think that's all. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Come here, Olive. Oh, you want to come, Annie? Okay, Annie comes and sees us. Annie is going to come and see us. See, Annie is... There's Annie. This is Annie. She's my first dog. She's a little anxious. Maybe she's really not. Maybe she just looks like she's always worried, and so I'm projecting my own self onto her, but that's what I do. She's awesome. See, so she's like, no, thank you. Put me down. Here, Olive. They just came to bark. <gasps> There's Olive. Olive is anxious about nothing. She's just like, yay. <laughs>